Hello everyone. Today on this podcast, Heart to Heart, it's a power chat with a power lady. She is known as the Queen of Nilgiris, the Iron Lady of Nilgiris. So in this particular series, we'll be having chats with various people who are successful in various walks of life. They have taken the path often untrodden and then against all odds, they have attained success. They've attained pinnacles of success. So let's hear from one of them, Dr. Rajamal, who is also my mentor. There has been a book written about her, The Lady with the Magic Lamb in English, which is an Amazon bestseller for which, you know, I'm grateful to God that I was one of the authors for that. And this book has been translated into Tamil, Mange Enum Mandira Devam. This has also received with lots of appreciation by the people of Tamil Nadu. So here we have a national award-winning educationist and social worker from India. She has won several awards, more than 40, uh, from the government of India and from various other organizations. She has won the South Indian Women Inspiration Award as well from none other than the legendary Suhasini Maniratnam. So let's now start the interview with Dr. Rajamal. Welcome, Dr. Rajamal. Okay. Yeah. So ma'am, uh, we have heard about you. We have also, I think the people would have read about, read about you in the book as well, The Lady with the Magic Lamp, which uh, Dr. Ashwati and myself had written. In that, we have mentioned that you have, uh, you have actually come, the, uh, come up in life in a very, uh, I would say, very, very resilient manner. With great perseverance, you had to overcome lots of odds. So let's ask you the most challenging uh, situation you had ever faced in your life. And how did you overcome that? Having a born in an agriculture-based family, along with um, totally we are five siblings, being the eldest and a very remote village where uh, women education was not very popular those days. It's 1961 born. I studied in a government school. Uh, we had to walk kilometers to reach school. So going to school itself was a great hurdle, which I had uh, with determination, my grit rather I would say. I went to school. After completing my middle school when it's in class nine, uh, we have early marriages in our community. I belong to Badaga community of Neil Greece, who are very popularly known for their simplicity, hard work, hospitality, and their customs and traditions. So I'm a proud Badaga woman. And um, going to school uh, with so many difficulties, walking three kilometers up and down, and in the weather, which is, uh, you can never predict the weather of Milgris. It may be raining any time. The roads are slushy. All that I crossed and I went because, just because it's interested to study. And the most difficult challenge I ever crossed in my life was uh, coming out of the marriage, which was fixed at the age of uh, just 14. I had completed 13 plus. I was like, uh, when I was a child, I was uh, named for my uh, cousin. Uh, to marry and uh, my relatives were insisting that my marriage should be completed when I was in class nine. I was totally against it but my word initially had uh, no saying. Uh, my mother was for it, my relatives were for it and the uh, groom also was for it but I had to literally undergo two days of starving and crying and uh, fretting and fuming. At last I won because I loved to study, I wanted to study I think that was the greatest challenge I ever came across as a child. The weather was no matter for me. The climate was no matter for me. Walking with, without sleeper was no difficult for me. Along with six boys, I was the only girl student. We had such a wonderful in the village uh, with nature. I think nature is a part of our life. That's why I was able to uh, overcome all that because it was very natural for me to be a natural girl amidst of a, a beautiful uh, valley. I think you come from a very close-knit community, right? The community of Badagas. Now, I know that uh, for a nuclear family, maybe a child going on hunger strike and then convincing her parents might be easy. But in your case, I think you had to convince the entire community of elders, right? The entire village elders were against you going for 
st higher studies beyond 10th standard, beyond your school, right? So how did you, I mean, how was this taken by the village elders? When you went on hunger strike, I think that was that that had been probably the first time they would have seen such a, uh, I would say, resolute uh, uh, girl who's like, you know, ha she's so determined, determined to go to school or, you know, pursue higher education. It's like equivalent of plus two in these days, say 11th grade, 12th grade. So what did they say when you went on hunger strike? People were not for it, my relatives. They said, why this girl is mad? They were uh, trained to brainwash my mother. It's not required. You have five kids and we are from a very normal family. So we should get her married so that the rest of the other sisters also will get married. A lot of things are going on. My father was the only one who was supporting me because he always thought I will become an Indira Gandhi. He had um, seen it in one political meeting, uh, speaking in the mic of, about some awareness for politics. My father just witnessed it when he went to visit the town for some purpose. He, is, he came at home and told me, um, Rajma, I wish one day you will stand in front of a mic and speak two lines in English. They came up and said, I said, Appa, if you educate me, why two lines? I will speak two pages. <laughs> I remember telling that to my father. And he supported me, but all most of the relatives were against it. And I insisted, I made my mother understand. I said, let my sisters, I gave a word. I think that played a, um, a good uh, role at that time. I said, let my younger sisters get married. I will not be interested to that. It, same thing happened. Both my younger sisters, they got married much before me. And uh, I, it was not a big issue. I said, I will wait. I'll study, I will work. I will educate the two brothers, so please allow me. A few things I had to compromise, and it did work at last. So I think uh, it was your uh, father being on your side, a little bit which might have tilted the balance. And then, of course, I think the villagers, uh, the elders uh, being, uh, I would say, in a position of being in intense shock. Why would a girl think of doing all this? Because uh, when you were a child, your marriage was fixed. You could have had lots of fun, you know, in the marriage rituals. And of course, it was, uh, you're, you're not going to marry a stranger. You're going to marry your own cousin, right? As a relative and whom, uh, you know, you had seen from childhood. And uh, in fact, your future mother-in-law would have been your aunt, if I'm not wrong, right? So that would have been actually like a, I would say, a dream come true moment for many girls. They would have thought, wow. I'm getting married. But for you, you had other dreams and other goals. So I had the least interest. I had the, I never wanted to. I wanted to study. That's a no other second thought, a no other desire, a no other dream. I okay. wanted to complete my studies. I want to go. I wanted to go to college. Nothing okay. else. Uh, marrying him. I, I know he loved me a lot. My aunt also loved me a lot. All yeah. that was there. But that did not influence me at all because yeah. of the focus was on education studies yeah i had to continue my studies i had to go to college yeah probably if they had told both of you go to college study and then later once you get jobs get married maybe life would have been maybe i'm just thinking it would have <laughs> yeah. but i know in those days that was unheard of if they fix a marriage they go ahead and, and i think they did conduct that marriage uh, even while you were in the college right while you were battling uh, english because you come from a rural background and when you went to college, you had a tough time with English, right? There's even that interesting story where uh, you could not uh, describe what your father's profession was, right? And then to your teacher, you were like pointing to the gardener and saying, yeah. father, this. I still remember that. It's like, and, uh, because you couldn't said, uh, So your, yeah. your father is a gardener, Rajima? <laughs> My father? No gardener. She said, then yeah. what? <laughs> You wanted to say farmer, right? You wanted to I say farmer. I didn't know to say farmer. I didn't know the word agriculture word was new to me. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to connect to the soil. So soil, okay. Sister, so my father, no farmer. Garden. No gardener. So then <laughs> what? Is it my yeah. father? Tea plants. So I showed in action, plucking tea. Okay. Then she okay. understood. <laughs> <laughs> Just through dumb sherrods, I think, you managed to communicate in those days. She loved but me because I'm so innocent. Yes. Until this is not talking. And I, think, and I think she would have loved you also because you were very determined to learn it even though you could have given an excuse I didn't come from this English medium background I don't know English and uh, instead of uh, instead of just lying I mean just keeping on taking that as an excuse 
you decided to change your future you actually decided to learn english i think every day one new word or something like that no ma'am can you share that story because i'm sure it will be an inspiration to many people even today they they say that they are from a certain regional language medium they don't know english and even in interviews they have found floundering they get uh, nervous when the questions are in english so can you share those that tips you know by sharing your own journey Definitely. how you mastered so, english so not i was somehow apart from the lessons because i did not understand anything i needed a dictionary i got one i used to take lessons every day to make sure that 10 big words from the textbook starting zoology next day is starting with a so the second day starting with b 10 words so 26 days i'll finish i'll come again back to square one so i made sure apart from reading and apart from trying to find out the meaning and trying to connect with the subject which i was studying this was a regular habit for almost four complete years even after learning english even after learning to speak i made it a point to write these 10 words it was a vocabulary bandar which i had a big notebook even now i have that and i made sure that all my students made this a habit during vacation i think your son also had experience i gave they have to read the newspaper because they could read their yes, text easily they were in english yeah. medium school so i said uh, to make to improve reading skill i said they should read newspaper write five words every day and they all enjoyed and at the end of uh, 55 days of vacation they came with a, a book full of uh, vocabulary with its meaning and yeah. each child almost 30 by 40 in the class so they could exchange it one syllab every day one new word from one child i would write from the board so that everybody will learn yes there, there are different wo- words to enhance vocabulary this yeah. was quite interesting for the children they liked yeah. it yes ma'am I, i remember that you gave that assignment uh, read the newspaper daily and then you have to write down five new words that you encountered while reading that newspaper so that was one assignment but i like the way you connected it with your subjects like from your subject if you're studying botany or if you're studying history or zoology from that subject try to learn 10 words a day i think that would be really really useful for all college students also yeah. suppose there is no point there is no point yes. in uh, uh, learning words which are not related to my books because i exactly. did not know what they meant for example yes. abdomen i started with abdomen yeah. if i still remember it zoology <laughs> i didn't know the meaning of it so that was the first word i got from zoology book okay okay like that makes sense even if if it is an engineering student they can take 10 new words or forget 10 new words at least to five new words from their textbook maybe for electronics take five new words learn the meaning in english and then you know try and use it and in that way like ma'am said you maintain a book like treasury like a bandar she said no it's like a you can keep your own book or a diary full of these words so that it will be helpful not only for interviews but even for examination point of view or even from knowledge assimilation point of view right ma'am so and i think you also did that practice of speaking in english to one of your teachers <laughs> can you tell more because i feel in, uh, when children just uh, write down the words they'll not learn only when they bring it into active vocabulary i remember my english ma'am uh, the late jsv ma'am she uh, used to say not only should you read a word and the meaning try to use that in a sentence the same week the more you use it the less likely you are to forget it so ma'am you were using that you were using that technique long long ago with one of your ma'ams no can you describe that story uh, madam the word is uh, her name is vasigiri yeah and um, i had more than uh, along with her my modern nun sister christopher also was very very supportive to be learning english so somehow i could connect the words in the textbook but my uh, spoken english was very i was very poor in spoke speaking skill so i never i was very poor in grammar especially so like when you use third person singular along with the verb you have to add s so like i still remember though now it is uh, 45 years ago in 7 1978 i still remember uh, sister was asking me something uh, i wanted to say the other girl she doesn't write actually that is that is the sentence i told her sister uh, elizabeth does not writes her homework i said 
the <laughs> gap and descend uh, you have to ah, use it yeah. i didn't know yeah. that you should not use s with the verb i didn't know that yeah. that was the truth because yeah. i was raw and rustic to english yeah. grammar yeah. so she said then she said uh, rajama in das there is one s right yes 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 in rights also another is mm. okay right she mm. said when one is one s is there this s went up <laughs> no <laughs> no need of the second s no need of the second s is it one i still remember she used to speak like this only does one s is there rajma yes yes yeah. rights s is there yes sister. no went up she she did not tell me about this word she went up sari small small things used to say. Yeah, little little she said in our s went up <laughs> she said so that see how like you no know, when you when you make a mistake and when you learn and you rectify and error becomes a mistake when you fail to correct it yes when you correct it no it, it was an, what i made was an error but i did not do that mistake again in my life yeah because she so the end of s that was the end of s with the dust and verb okay i think you are a uh, blessed with good uh, angelic teachers also who were angelic teachers who are trying to help you you are surrounded by them but i think what they would have seen is someone who is trying so hard to you know uh, right the wrongs that you know you were subjected to as a child you didn't have that opportunity to study even though you were topper in your school etc uh, despite lots of hardship you had come up in life so they might have seen this girl is not giving up at all she is like going on studying 10 words a day let's do our best to help i think your friends also try to help many right? of, many of my yeah. friends my roommate especially her yeah. name is elizabeth vergis she was okay. she never knew tamil uh-huh. and i learned malayalam from her okay. <laughs> she, used to, she used to try to explain to me in malayalam little bit that i did not understand sister okay. christopher vasigiri madam my lecturer yeah. and my other uh, classmates was, initially i was looking like a ridicule with my dress and my half yeah. sari and my hair style and my ribbon and all It was looking very strange for them. They thought I was a yeah. um, mockery. You know, they were. They, what this girl is going to do in this crowd? Probably they would have. Uh, yeah, it's like that. a country girl costume. You know, it's like <laughs> all that. Typical, typical yeah. country girl costume. Mm-hmm. And um, and then they saw me like uh, you know struggling so hard uh, yeah. to learn and to survive amidst yeah. crowd. So, yeah. So they thought I. They would. They they started loving me so much. Yes. That the ridicule became so positive. Yeah, we all became my friends. I was, I became their pet for the whole lot in the hostel. Each I one, think... whatever I wanted, they were ready to teach me. I'll go sit yeah. and learn. I'll go by heart, yeah. or I'll write. I'll show them. I'll get it corrected. Yeah. All, all my um, classmates became my teachers. Yeah, so I, I think just... instead of ridiculing you or instead of scoffing at you, they would have thought. they would have been amazed by your determination and, and they would have thought let us and i talked i talked to the colleague that is the best part of the end no thought we they were scored lesser than me yeah but and i became the their, yeah but it's due to their help that uh, you could master english and then uh, you got uh, i think governor's rank also no district yeah. rank district yeah. rank for uh, botany Graduation. yeah botany right botany yeah now uh, after that you did masters in english and you got a job at kv uh, before that you also worked in several other schools yeah. so uh, once you got into kv uh, later you met a person and then uh, you admired him you wanted to help his family basically and then you got married but it did not go as per your plan right things went for it was but of course you got another treasure I named uh, Prithvi, a uh, son, a loving son, whom you got from the marriage. But life was a bit unkind to you, though. So this, uh, this particular situation nowadays also, a lot of people are facing that. People, uh, not only women, men also, they love someone with all their heart, and then they become heartbroken when they realize that the other person is not loving them so much, and people tend to, you know. take up uh, drugs or even alcohol and then uh, you know go around like devdas um, in despair etc instead of doing all that right you were like okay let me serve the society let me put all my energy into bringing up my son prithvi along with that let me do 100% or more justice to my teaching profession plus uh, during all the weekends you started doing social work 
So can we say that uh, you becoming a single mother was a crucial turning point in your life? So, so probably being a single parent may be crucial to everybody. Yes. Mine was more difficult because yes. I was excommunicated from my village. Yeah. I was all alone yeah. with that chair because I married yeah. a man of another community. I mean, and, your uh, age elders were not at all happy with that. And the relatives like, were not happy. My parents yes. were not visiting me. Yes. Uh, like almost like an orphan, like you know, traveling in the train when I was. Uh, yeah. Next day I was going to deliver, but I was traveling alone with the train. Train, yeah. And had coming to back to... Uh, with uh, all the very complicated cesarean in uh, nine yeah. days, coming back traveling alone with a, a little baby. Baby. It was all yes. very difficult. It was all extremely difficult. You know, difficult, was, uh, yeah. But I, I never, I had, I, yeah, I, yeah, I did not, I did not uh, feel bad about it because I have not done anything wrong. Exactly. So I, my message to people who have such a difficult situation where yes. they happen to get separated or where, you know, yeah. they are being hurt when their heart is broken. I'll say when you are right, mm. there is nothing to fear. Yes. I always feel that when I was, I could stand strong on my legs and mentally I was strong. Uh, physically, I was healthy. Morally, mm. I was straight. Yes. And psychologically, I was sound. And yeah. what, what is the reason? I have not done any mistake. Yeah. Let me stand straight. Look yeah. up. I'll stand tall wherever I go. Yeah. Because I have not done anything wrong. I have not yeah. cheated anybody. Yeah. And it was a blessing in disguise and God's grace. It was a boy. Yeah. And my mother, parents came back to me. My community accepted me. Things turned. Yeah. Fought the downtrodden. I used to start involving in social work. It, yeah. it was there in my blood from the beginning as from my childhood. And I, I started shaping it and I, I made it more as I grew up. And yeah. uh, that's how it I think from your childhood, you had seen your mom uh, help others, even though she had very little. But from that very little, she will try to uh, give some to the... Very strong, strange yeah. and strong woman my mother was. Yeah. Hard working, empathetic and... Yeah. Uh, She'll never uh, gender bias. She, she'll never say the, our cowboy was also same in our house. Same dress, yeah. same plate, same food. She'll only give yeah. him back along with. So yeah. was, she, thought, she thought all are human beings. That's all. Yes. Yes. When, when our I, own community, when they had discriminated these kind of people, they yeah. used to give them a tea in the coconut shells. But my mother okay, said, because they were or he was an orphan also, right? He was an yeah. orphan kind of and, and uh, he will come to our house, he will stay with us. So I learned from my mother that uh, everybody has to be treated alike. She yes. will share, she will go, she will take workers to the field, she will yeah. sit with them, she will eat, she will share her food, she will take their food and eat. I have asked Mama, how is that? What kind of food they bring? You're taking <laughs> from the meat. She said, they'll feel, they'll feel happy. When I give yeah. mine and take theirs, they'll yeah. feel happy. So people love to work with my mother in the yeah. field. Yeah. So going to others, you know, everybody will give them payment. But yeah. they love working with me. Sarasamami, they all will flock. So once yeah. they complete our field rotation of plucking leaves, then they'll go to other areas. Yes. Yeah. That, that is what I my think, mother taught me. I think she treats, she used to treat everyone with love and respect. So it's not the money that counts, but the love and respect that she used to shower on them, that they would, uh, you know, remember and forever cherish, right? So I think you had good uh, role model in your mom for social work, even though she had less... It's like, you know, she had a family of five <laughs> to keep and your father was uh, not working at that. And it was actually financially, it was really difficult times for your mother, right? She's trying to bring up five children on top of her, that uh, cow herd boy, little boy also. And so I was very touched when uh, I heard that your mom, uh, you know, uh, even gifted him the same kind of dress that she made for all of you. It's like same value, equal value treating everyone equally. I think that's where you learned. You learned at the lap of a mother. Uh, no wonder you did not see difference when you married outside the community also because for you, everyone is the same, whether inside community. It's just a little unfortunate that that person did not uh, you know, respect you in the way you respected and helped this family, etc. Right? You were helping them always. With, uh, so at your... this point, what you, I would like to tell the youngsters yeah. not to fall you know, falling in love is not, not wrong. I don't uh, say it's the wrong one. Try to understand them completely. You mm. just get into a life very fast. Then yes. they're broken hearted. You know, that, then, instead of why, yeah. you should try to understand 
and uh, understand see the consequences of that yeah before so, taking any step future, yeah. yeah then yeah. It, because people you know sometimes love is blind to the, they say but yeah. i never felt in love that is different the yeah. mind was not a love marriage you say You, you are more moved by his uh, family's background you know yeah. yeah they were very exactly. poor and you want to help just the youngsters of now yeah. not to be blindly you know all for somebody and forsake your parents and everything yes. and go with them then come back uh, you know um, broken with broken life it's it's a yeah. pain for the parents also right yes so i think they should think twice understand them and if yeah. you really feel that uh, the person is made for you go ahead and live a happy life ultimately your life should be happy So yeah. you should plan and prepare well and see that uh, you choose the yes. right person with the right yeah. character. Because plenty of people, you know, they are every after marriage, not even six months, one year, one month. Even now, even after ten yeah. days, people are coming. Out. What we hear yeah, in the I papers and the news. Yeah. So I think that thing should not happen. Yes, and people think that it will not happen to us, and they rush into some decision. And later, young people, very young people who are not even probably having a secure job, they. lose everything even uh, they do lose money yes. their yeah their good name everything and finally you know they are left shattered and broken and it's not just women actually men and women both get yes. shattered both. yeah both get Agreed. betrayed yeah so i think youngsters we need to learn from this and like ma'am said thing even in her case actually she was 29 and even at that age you know see 29 when she's having a government job only she took the decision even then uh, things went wrong so uh, when you are taking a decision at a young age do think <laughs> twice uh, especially have a secure job because in rajma mam's case that saved her because she had a secure government job so even if someone abandons her and her child she could still live on because she has a secure job and she can still uh, hold her head high in the society and live on and that's what she did she went on to win ncert award for best teacher uh, she, with the innovative teaching techniques i still remember that example because solar system uh, none of us can forget solar system right that nine planets back then there were nine planets now only eight planets are the pluto has been demoted uh, to mini planet etc but back then there were nine planets so ma'am actually devised a song and dance sequence she wanted children to remember so she used the uh, they say you no know, nlp technique where you have not only audio but also kinesthetic learn by moving, moving and all learn by doing so she incorporated a song and dance to for children to remember solar system and for that she got uh, ncert uh, saw that it was unheard of in those The same same way I dramatize yeah. science. Usually science. people dramatize yeah. literature. My yeah. complete paper was on dramatizing science. Each chapter, it was yeah. either a riddle or a skit or a okay. song. You no, know, like different, different, different. Or a quiz. The complete okay. syllabus. I made it into an innovative project. The, the title, like, title was teaching science through dramatization. Dramatic. So it will be like you know photosynthesis. Also, you can learn yes, yes. through drama. Yes. Yeah. My yes. <laughs> children, I think each one they give they they are given a. a A topic like I'm the leaf, I'm the flower, and so he yeah. is trying to come and say I'm the most beautiful part part of the flower. The leaf <laughs> says I'm like the mother of a family. I prepare food, and the root says I hold you straight. So I am yeah. more important. Yeah. And the leaf says the flower says the seed. Each one the fruit says ultimately I'm only eaten and I'm useful for the people. So okay. each one says I'm greater. Then finally the the plant says I'm a mother of all of you. All together we make a plant. Yeah. Everybody is important in the plant. They keep yeah. saying like that. So along with the skit they. get moral value also moral so that's value value Which values at the end yeah. of a skit yes unity yeah. strength we talk about unity strength so and why children learn quickly the reason is when you say i am so and so they learn it very fast yes i am i am the leaf and yes. i prepare the food then uh, you will remember okay then uh, they never even after so many yes. years from child after 30, 25 years one yeah. child said madam still i remember the drama i performed <laughs> i was a yes. flower a yeah. sunflower you know with the chart with the part of yeah. the plant yeah. around them you know so beautifully she does i am the sunflower and the most beautiful part people take me to temple for worship the ladies wear me you know in the, on their head to beautify them and i go to temples and i am decorating for houses for everything i am yeah. ex- expression of love as a rose so yeah. the, the child has not forgotten even after okay. 20 years yes yeah, that's up so how uh, what is the intention of a teacher how yeah. clear the concept is conveyed 
yes instead of just you know by hearting the concept or write it on the board because back then i remember it it used to be like that people used to write on the board and we had to write it down so that's when she is using uh, these kind of innovative technique i remember on this occasion one ma'am of mine uh, she used to make us put pookalam that is a flower carpet like rangoli uh, in the form of indian uh, india map so we were in fourth standard and uh, it is like she asked us put it like a rangoli you know like a deck uh, with floor and all you can make it and you can also add flowers to it so that every state one child will take care so whichever state we drew we'll not forget and you know it's like together we all made that so i think it is these kind of teachers no who make education uh, seem like fun you know it's a uh, Uh, it's in moments of uh, fun that we do our best learning they are inspiring inspiring teachers i never forgot it yes <laughs> yes seriously and you yourself were inspired by a teacher back at school right when you were in school there is to be a teacher whom you used to admire and due to her only you wanted to pursue higher studies become a teacher so right so would you like to mention clear in her teaching yeah and just to dress up so well all matching matching till wear a sweater <laughs> and have a rose on the side of her you know they put that yeah. the hair up and she is very pretty and same way beautiful she was very intelligent so just think how beautiful she is and how beautiful she teaches yeah that she is able to lead and they she was very strict yeah. also she was very strict yeah. also uh, so then i i thought i should be so i had been uh, a disciplinary i i was i'm never i'm never a soft teacher i right? am yeah. a strict disciplinary also i take children yeah. to task but okay. i balanced love and discipline together Yeah, I didn't right. have any problem in handling. And her name also you can mention. That uh, Mrs. Rukmani. Her name is Mrs. Rukmani. Yeah, because She's it still... is because of Rukmani, madam, that we got Rajmal. Otherwise, she might have gotten married as a child and maybe settled <laughs> down. Probably another five children and plucking tea. Yeah, she would have been like a grandma, you know, just uh, living in a village. Uh, right now, she is serving at Sarvalayam, which is a center set up by Kala, madam. Uh, she uh, gave up all her wealth to serve the poor kala ma'am is also known as the mother teresa of vellakovil it's near to tirupur so if you are interested to visit dr rajamal or kala ma'am you can visit them at sarvalayam which is a, which is a home for the elderly destitute elder, elderly as well as for young children especially young girls who are who have nowhere to go so they take care of both the children and the elderly so rajamal ma'am leads a very hectic life i i always tell her even after retirement from kendra vidyalaya school uh, she is she has to get up early every day <laughs> uh, monday to saturday right all six days <laughs> she has to wake up early because the children have school right the elderly need to be uh, given medicines yeah. etc so she need to take care so she and kala ma'am are leading a life of service the and uh, so she continues to be a role model for all of us and we wish her even more success in the days to come uh, we hope that her life uh, becomes an inspiration to many like from being uh, abandoned with a sing- with a baby right uh, from there you know life could have t- taken a different turn some people would have said i did not have a happy life i was abandoned i was a single mother she could have been a complaining i would say grouchy you know old lady but instead she uh, turned all her pain into service she decided to serve the others around her the especially the destitute and the orphan she has been associated with uh, ngos like indian development foundation which works in the field of healthcare education etc she has been chosen as the social ambassador for idf she is also in the trustee board of good life center Uh, which again caters to children uh, orphans to be precise and then she is also said with several other good causes including sarvalayam so wish her we wish her a good life long life full of good health and prosperity and i know even if she uh, gets prosperity we tell her whatever money she gets also even from her pension she continues to donate uh, to people if anyone comes to them she keeps uh, donating uh, but we also pray for her good health because we need people like them to live long and also inspire us not to sit and cry over our losses not to sit and uh, be in despair over uh, what life dishes out to you 
if you are broken hearted or if you don't clear that job interview do read her book the lady the book about her the lady with the magic lamp or in tamil we may be bringing out the translations in hindi or other languages <laughs> as per it's all god's wish and will uh, but uh, do grab a copy and read it you can also watch her videos she has been interviewed thank you so much and yeah. uh, my simple my simple message to everybody is you know enjoy your life be happy there is if you are happy you are you are the reason if you are unhappy only you are the reason for it so yeah. enjoy whatever you do and that will, as i believe in karma what goes around will come around for karma. every good deed you do it will come back to you believe yes. in that whatever best you can do for others you do and lead your life happily peacefully stress is not going to help us in any way she has uh, been yeah. interviewed uh, on doordarshan and other she channels also i thanks to manju and ashwati for the book beautiful book. yeah and and, and kamala ma'am for the channel. translation as well kamala murli ma'am yeah. she translated it kamala ma'am for the translation and uh, my recent um, the interview by aval bigden was uh, viewed by more than 4 lakh uh, viewers yeah. that was something yes. very amazing and there was the comment thousands of comments they all said we have been inspired a lot by your aval i feel happy uh, that I have, yeah. i have touched and connect touched so many hearts and they have connected them to me because of i was it was they felt themselves in they saw them in me that's how it reached so many 4 yeah. lakh views for an ordinary person i'm not a yeah. celebrity i'm not a heroine i'm not a um, politician but still i could reach uh, 4 lakh people with something i feel really very happy and thanks to all the viewers and thanks to all the readers for your wonderful comments and your reviews and uh, few more people still you can read both either the english or tamil come up in life and uh, whatever you do whatever you become do little for the society that social responsibility will uh, take your life in a longer way and in a better way yes i'm sure all can be a good human being apart from whatever we have whatever we do if you are a good human with empathetic values your life will be meaningful thank you yes. so much yeah thank you so much ma'am ma'am has been interviewed by several tv channels including doordarshan then tandi tv many channels raj tv also gave her an award south indian award Uh, women inspiration award so several channels have uh, felicitated her and aval vikatan is a leading uh, magazine in uh, from the state of tamil nadu so in that uh, they had done an online interview of her which is what uh, got uh, 4 lakh views so we thank everyone for that as well and ma'am what we feel is that ma'am uh, we should end this particular interview with a quote from you only uh, the quote uh, which i like very much is education and social work are like my two eyes so in that statement you have right. some dr rajamal like uh, along with education right importance of education in her life she also gives importance to social work when we say we don't have enough money to help others uh, when people try to help others people often say are you a billionaire are you elon musk or are you a money to help others actually what rajamal ma'am showed me is that you don't have to be billionaire or millionaire to help others if you have 100 from that 100 you can give 1 rupee to a needy person right genuinely needy person or an orphan or a destitute person that is service so you don't have to be a millionaire or billionaire so you, in case you are thinking once i become a billionaire i'll start doing charity no you can start today just like dr rajamal did she was a single mother Uh, with i think she would have had lot of difficulty because she was also helping her family her dad her mom her younger brothers at that time but even from that amount whatever small amount she had she used to still set aside a, a few uh, you know a percentage of that to help the poor and i think that is what you know came back as good karma for her in the form of all these national awards etc like what you do today right it's like a seed you you plant it today uh, tomorrow you will get a tree but maybe the fruits of the tree will go to someone else but that's how her spirit is she wants to plant trees for helping others so she does it by sharing her knowledge also so if you don't have money you can even share your time you can donate your time to help others that is what she showed with her life so thank you so much ma'am and i wish and hope that your uh, journey continues 
for another 40, 50, 60 years. <laughs> like life is not done. If you're only at the, I would say halfway through. So another 60 years, we hope to see you alive and rocking, <laughs> serving the people. So our that's, prayers, a long, that's a long time. Long yeah. time, but yeah. Thank you. But we will pray you, Manju. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And on behalf yeah. of all the audience also, I thank you. Thanks a lot.